generous frame of mind when we give to community. Be willing to let the gifts of the community reward and nurture you. This is very important. So the temporary community I talked about with a concert and with musicians, what would a concert be like if the musicians did not let the audience applaud? If instead of letting in the appreciation and the love of the audience, they just kept going. They just kind of ignored you and just kept going. We'd be frustrated, wouldn't we, as audience members? We want to participate in that give and take. So what a performer offers us is very much the receiving as well as the giving. So I think it's very important in community that we allow ourselves to be in that receptive mode, to appreciate the thank you, to appreciate yourself reflected in others' eyes, and to share in the joy of the action you've created together. The whole community is lessened when the members are not willing or able to receive from their involvement. I was at a seminar when I became a minister, and uh, Summer is a conference we used to have down in Southern California. And in the middle of the week, it was apparent I was going to become a minister. And I was at lunch, and I just started to cry. Dr. Carol Carnes came up to me, and she said, what's going on? And I said, well, I'm just really clear that the, that the most difficult thing for me about becoming a minister is going to be that I'm going to have to let in all that love. And <laughs> she said, bingo. It is not enough that we show up and do what we can do. It is also required of us that we have that experience of knowing our own worth, of receiving from the community. And the fourth one is take time to notice the value of your contribution, the value of the members of your community, and the value of the results you achieve together. Think of the benefits you might achieve applying this last one to communities you are part of. For instance, your workplace. So any of you who did not raise your hand to say that your workplace was a joyful and loving community, what could you bring to your workplace community that could raise the level of it to make it a community of true mutual benefit? I am, I have almost always been involved in workplace communities that were like that. And I, I've noticed over the years that it has quite a bit to do with me. That there would be people in my workplace right now, in my work team, that might tell you this would be a good workplace except for that person. Hopefully not me. But you know, that person, or that boss, or this policy. Or some people, I work in an educational institution, some people think it would be a good job if it weren't for all those pesky students. <laughs> so, so really our satisfaction in any community has very much to do with us what we're choosing to bring, what we're choosing to see. And the last idea I have for you is repeat one through four often. Where is your best gift going to be received in the way you want to give it? Find a way to do some of that for other people. Give your best, be willing to receive the best. Take time to notice the value of what you're up to. Ernest Holmes said, one of the great difficulties in the new order of thought is that we are likely to indulge in too much theory and too little practice. We're all about here self-contemplation, yes, but then taking it out. Taking it out into the world, practicing it, and growing from the experiences. So one of the best ways to discover more of who we are is to offer our gifts, and the time to begin is now. You can be part of something greater than your individual effort, and something that will not be as successful without your contribution. So keep asking yourself, what community magnifies or will magnify my gift? What will multiply my efforts so the results are greater than the sum of the parts? A musical group like we have the joy of experiencing each Sunday is not just one keyboard, one drum, one guitar, one fiddle, one voice. Individually, each of these musicians, each of these contributions could be and is great. But together, they produce a sound that is a whole new ball game that is something sublime. Our gifts alone are valuable and needed, and our gifts combined are magical and life-changing. So as we close, I hope that these few minutes spent thinking about community 
will encourage and inspire you to continue to participate fully in the communities in your life and to know that your contribution is essential and valued. However we define community, I want to leave you with the thought that there is no greater pursuit than getting to know and accept yourself more fully as a spiritual human being, independently and interdependently with others, so that you can give your greatest gifts, because we need you and the world needs you. I started this talk by describing our community. Here at the center, you participate as ministers, sound people, students, set up people, fun day school volunteers, organizers, event volunteers, volunteer coordinators, musicians, an office manager, and as audience congregation members. Each of us giving and receiving, making a contribution that multiplies, multiplies our impact as a place of spiritual growth and renewal. The final example, example I'd like to leave you with of the profound power of community is um, the community of Calgary. We are blessed to be part of a community of people that have that uh, willingness to look out for one another. Even though we're a city of a million plus people, we do in many, many ways take care of each other. The flood last year was such a profound, uh, dramatic representation or demonstration of the impact and the power of community. So giving our gifts individually, as the mayor does regularly in this city, and giving our gifts communally, together, in this community in Calgary and in all the communities we're part of, we bring healing, we bring greater health, prosperity, joy, and peace to one another. And what could be greater? So let's not wait for another crisis to demonstrate life-giving community. We are saving one another's lives daily by building strong and giving communities of thoughtful, caring, committed people. Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Be well and thank you for all that you do and all that you are. Close with a spiritual mind treatment. Let us know together that there is one power. One power. And within this one power, all of us receive our life, our expression. There is nothing greater than the power of the individual to be an expression of love and joy and peace and kindness. Individual expressions of the magnificence of spirit come together to create communities of peace and power. And it is clear that as we work in community, we shift the planet. That as we give our best and receive the best from others, life is made new. So we own this idea. We say yes. We say yes to life flowing fully and freely by means of us. And then we just let the opportunities to express more of who we are, come to us naturally and easily. So blessing this idea of our selves as whole and complete and our communities as whole and complete, we release this word in gratitude for this community, for all communities everywhere, and for one another. We release this word, knowing that it is so as spoken, and together we declare, and so it is.